Hey everybody, it's Gamer Gramps here. I'm using a save file from someone who got overwhelmed after playing their first 60 turns on DB when they got attacked early and couldn't go any further. After seeing step by step that it's possible to come back even from the brink of disaster, you can absolutely crush your next game. Before going any further, you should like the video so YouTube knows you want to see more about the games you love, especially when those same videos are going to help you get better at playing them faster. All right, here we go. It's bright and early in the morning. Morning. I got my nice Tim Hortons coffee with me because I'm Canadian <sighs> and we're gonna jump in here and see what we're dealing with now I'm not gonna be shocked I've already seen this I looked at it yesterday to make sure the save file worked and all that as you can see we have our work cut out for us we're at war with Australia the viewer who sent me this in basically kind of gave up on it because he essentially just feels like he's not making any progress in the war and doesn't really know where to go from here he's essentially just feels like he's spinning his wheels more or less I can kind of see why with the way things have gone here I definitely would have played this a lot differently myself but I mean hey it is what it is and we're here to help you learn how to do things a little bit differently and maybe get some different results for yourself so the first thing we're going to be taking a look at is i've noticed he's got holy sites in both his capital and the second city so i want to see what he chose for religion and what we're dealing with that way and also what pantheon he chose because that's gonna help frame the way we take things moving forward and okay so he went choral music which i like shrines and temples providing culture equal to their intrinsic faith output yeah i know it's surprising i can read but hey it's true so we got choral music and crusade so we also are gonna get 10 plus uh, <laughs> Plus 10 combat strength when within the borders of foreign cities that follow this religion, which is great because he also has a shit ton of faith built up that he hasn't really done anything with. So we are going to go and correct that problem right away. And this has actually set us up fairly strongly for what he's wanting to do, which is basically win a domination game, right? So the one thing I just noticed too, he went with the religious settlements pantheon, which is a good choice. However, it it kind of surprises me he went with that pantheon and only has two cities on turn 60 to me that's kind of out there a little bit and i'm not sure what he was focused on uh, in the early game why he didn't build a settler naturally from his capital like maybe he just bumped into the, the yeah probably that's what it would be i'd be guessing since they're so close and maybe he just got intimidated or something but that's okay it is what it is so next let's take a look into the civic street and see what we're working with okay so he doesn't have military tradition that's a huge huge mistake military tradition lets your units have flanking and support combat bonuses aside from also letting you get two great general points a turn and the maneuver policy card which you can see here he also has 32 horses stockpiled so that's definitely a mistake he should have gone for that earlier preferably before political philosophy because the combat support bonuses that you're going to unlock naturally automatically when you research this are just as important as getting to oligarchy for the plus four combat strength from your melee units so we're going to correct that we're going to go for military tradition right away and then kind of re reevaluate from there because generally speaking i'd want to get to mercenaries as quickly as we can however and the raid policy card in military tradition is also very powerful and i'd want to get that going however because he was already going for drama and poetry and has it boosted because he built a wonder and he's founded a religion which would help him get theology and unlocks temples for us which will let us get down the civic street that much faster i think in this specific situation i'm actually gonna go down the bottom half to grab theology and then i might even take recorded history before going military tradition because australia has campuses here and yeah we definitely want to take them over fairly quick you can see the capitals working on building city walls too they don't have it now but they are on its way the other three cities don't so that gives us a little bit of room to play with maybe we can take advantage before they get shit up there so before i forget first things first let's go ahead and start off with a missionary right away and we're gonna get out of the settler in this turn it's way too late to be building settlers 
in a domination game when you already have your neighbor this close and they're not built already. You could make an argument to me for making one more city over here in order to chop all these tiles, but realistically, I think you're just better off getting the promotion for Magnus as quickly as you can. And so the reason being is we want to get his black marketeer promotion. So we want to get here so that strategic resource costs for units are discounted by 80% because that card's gonna allow us to chop out legions and horsemen lickety split with next to no resources needed. So yeah, that's the route we're gonna go. We're gonna go ahead and put our government plaza. Now I'm picking it here because what I'll probably end up doing is getting a commercial hub here and an encampment here if we get up to 10 population at some point, but that's not really the priority the priority is the gold from the plus four commercial hub personally because we'll be grabbing an encampment here from our second city possibly either here or here i want them to be along the roadway so that our units can just keep moving forward and take advantage of that i probably will build it there depending on how how quickly we can clear up the enemy units here but Anyway, I've talked enough. Let's continue on with this. Okay, so first off, we want to get the hell out of this and stop building a warrior. We're definitely going to switch into builders immediately. We need to chop shit out as fast as possible. Meanwhile, I think what I'll do is, yeah, we'll we'll upgrade this warrior next into a leisure because it costs 150 gold and 10 iron to do. It. So we'll literally have the 10 iron and the cash for that next turn. Meanwhile, here... We'll fortify in position to continue to heal up and let these guys kill themselves on us. And the same thing all across the board here. Meanwhile, let's see what promotions his archers have. He's got volley here on this wounded archer. Volley on that wounded one and garrison on the one he's got in the city. So that's great in concept, except for the fact that this archer can't hit shit because he's hiding behind hills with forests and jungle on them and stuff. So what we're going to do is actually circle this guy out and park him right on top of our holy site there so he can still hit these tiles and he gets that plus 10 combat strength. Meanwhile, we want to get this archer into the city next turn so he can start healing up faster and then can start dealing damage once we move him out to a different location. Okay, believe it or not, I'm happy with the way that all worked out. That was a lot of attacking on their part and they didn't kill a single one of our units. And now we're in a good position to go ahead and do some damage to, to them. So you always ideally want to clear out their units with promotions first when you can. So first thing we're gonna do is get our strong archer here and we should be able to kill this fucker. Okay, he's out of the way. We're gonna take out their warrior there meanwhile here this is the guy that we're going to choose to upgrade to the legion because he's already halfway towards being upgraded the second time and he still has fairly strong health so that is the thought process for me there meanwhile we're going to run away with that warrior to let him heal up and the same thing with the archer that we moved to the city there for for that exact same reason and meanwhile just stay calm everybody here is just gonna chill out meanwhile i don't know why his uh, missionary was still way back here and just kind of chilling out it looks like he has some sleeping but we're definitely gonna move out with him we're gonna move him to this tile here even if they move their warrior on top of there they won't have enough movement strength to pillage him so it essentially is just a target for them to try and go after and then meanwhile here we're gonna try it and come around and get closer to Cahokia, who they have suzerainship of, or even Melbourne, possibly, depending on how the situation is. And again, go right back and purchase another missionary here. Okay, we got military tradition. We're going to change policies immediately. We're getting out of colonization because we're not building any more settlers. And... Meanwhile here, conscription is definitely important because we have all our military units and it's the only thing that's keeping us making money. However, because we have so much more horses and we already have a bunch of warriors that we're going to need to upgrade anyway, 
which is going to take a, a lot of iron to do that properly and a lot of gold etc so in the meantime we're actually going to take advantage of a maneuver policy card once we get magnus his promotion um but in the meantime we actually might chop out a horse or two first so we're going to slot maneuver in there and then for the wild card policy we're going to go ahead and put strategos in actually wait let me take a quick look here okay perfect there's no great general point have been recruited and no nobody is literally making great general points so we are actually ahead of the curve in this game and i'm just gonna double check this is on on deity isn't it like i'm i'm legitimately okay yeah it is i thought so Okay, so we're switching out colonization, putting in strategos, and like we said, switching maneuver for a goge, and everything else is okay. But then meanwhile, like we said, we're gonna go towards theology before making our decision whether we go for recorded history or up the, the top of the tree there. All right, so here, ideally, you always want to get rid of their promoted units first. So that's who we're going to target. And we're also starting our attack with the archer who gets plus 10 combat strength so that we do more damage and it's more likely that we kill them. For now, we're just going to hang back with that missionary until we get things under control. Okay, so we're going to try and maybe ninja into Melbourne to spread some of our religion, but we'll we'll take it one step at a time here. All right, meanwhile, we got pottery. I think the play for us is to basically just click on apprenticeship and get there as humanly fast as humanly possible so we can get to man at arms. We have everything boosted between there, so we should get there fairly quickly not to mention once we get a little bit of momentum going here and can pillage their campuses that will also help us get towards our goals that much quicker all right here we're just going to continue retreating with the warriors really banged up rip <laughs> okay i guess they didn't have enough movement so fuck me we're getting the hell out of there they didn't have enough movement to to condemn us on the spot so we are just gonna run for our lives and we'll just focus on slowly bring our religion in as we escort our units here on the front line with our troops okay so speaking of the front line and our troops we're gonna take out that warrior take out that warrior Okay, we finished the government plaza there. It's going to be 10 turns for Warlord's Throne, and that's way too much. So we're going to immediately go into working on a builder. And the reason why we're choosing a builder is because we're going to be sending all of our builders up here where Magnus is established to do the chops. And then we'll rotate Magnus back to the capital to do more chops and we'll chop out our Warlord's Throne at that point. Um, in order to just save time more or less essentially but in the meantime we'll go ahead and promote him to provision which is one step closer to black market here all right our legion got a promotion there we got writing and drama and poetry let's take a look no we don't want to change anything we'll go to mysticism next and policy wise we're happy with the way we have things here uh speaking of which our builder next turn when he comes out we can start chopping into a horseman and yeah i think we're okay as far as that go 
For melee troops, you always want to take the battle cry promotion over the Taurus promotion. The reason being is if you really pay attention to the way they word things here, you get plus seven combat strength versus melee and range units with battle cry. Where while Taurus, it actually sounds almost a little bit better, where you get plus ten combat strength when defending against ranged attacks. This one just hands down is better because it's essentially only plus three combat strength you're getting with Tortoise because you get plus seven from Battlecry, but that plus seven is applicable whether you're being attacked or def- wait, <laughs> I was just about to say that wrong. Whether you're being attacked or you're the one doing the attacking, you still get plus seven. So essentially Tortoise is actually really limiting the amount that of combat strength that you get. The only reason you would want to get through it is to go amphibious, but that's not really even that good of a promotion, especially when you consider like movement speed or movement ability is king in this game because it allows you to outmaneuver the AI a lot, which is very, very useful to say the least. All right, so something else to keep in mind here too. Uh, another way to get early score really easy really is he fuck my life speak english kid all right and so i'm like thrown off my game and completely lost my train of thought there uh so an easy way to get air score is to convert enemy cities to your religion when you're at war you get plus three air score every single time you do it for the entire game it doesn't matter how many cities there are you get plus three air score every time as long as you're at war with them I'm actually just looking here. It's only 75 bucks to buy that tile. So I think I actually will do the encampment up there and we'll just buy it in a few more turns here. But meanwhile, let's go ahead and start attacking this guy. Considering we have all these units here, like we have the two different archers that are gonna hit him. We have the third archer in our city and our legion here to ultimately finish him off if we want to. That's probably what we're going to aim to do is just to outright delete this unit in one turn. So we'll actually oops, move forward with this archer and attack him as well. And now Sayonara. Yeah, we're 100% running the fuck away <laughs> with this missionary. However, we need to scout over here anyway, so it's kind of not the end of the world, and maybe we can just kind of go the long way, take the scenic route, however you want to say it, and come in and, and maybe get Brisbane underneath our control there. Yeah, no, we're not making peace with you, buddy. All right, so here we go. We're definitely going to spread our religion here, pick up some air score. But meanwhile, that's actually huge for our ability to survive against them because we have plus 10 combat strength inside of their city walls now, which essentially turns our archers into crossbowmen, more or less, and our warriors into swordsmen. So yeah, we're definitely going to keep this going. But again, it's going to be easier to do this going after these outside cities first to convert them all so that they add to the pressure to convert Melbourne easier. Not to mention they don't have walls so we can actually approach them a lot easier, right? And here we're not moving forward because we'd be able to get hit by the city walls there. So we'll just take things nice and slow with our legion we'll back up here and we're immediately starting actually you know what we're gonna need the battering ram anyway so we're immediately gonna start on the battering ram there in that city Mysticism is finished. We're going to go ahead and head straight for theology as we already talked about. 
And they have already levied their army, so I think we should be okay. Oh, famous last words. <laughs> well, I was right in thought, but didn't factor barbarian horsemen into the equation here. So it is what it is there. Look at that, they made us a settler. That is just, all right, I take back any of the negative things I was saying about John Kurd. He is a courteous, just a courteous guy. Making settlers for us, how considerate is that, really? You know, like, how, how could I be mad at him? All right, meanwhile here, we're gonna start poking holes in their warrior on that side. We should be able to finish this warrior off here with our legion. All right, so we should get a promotion here once we clip them with the archer. And we'll finish off with our legion. They are under siege? All right, there must be a lot of barbarians. <laughs> uh, all right, we can deal with that, but it's definitely something we should be aware of as we're, we're moving along here that we're, we should definitely take things one step at a time and not get ahead of ourselves. Okay, we finished the builder in the capital and we're immediately going to start on another builder. And meanwhile, we're sending this guy up to Antium right away. Next turn, we're going to remember to buy that tile before I forget. surprises me you only get health from pillaging Cahokia mounts but that actually really surprises me I thought for sure it would be money ah there we go we met a new sieve okay and they got walls up in Canberra we knew it was only going to be a matter of time. That's why we were starting on the battering ram as it was. Which the battering ram will help us get those walls done down real quick. Especially once we actually convert them. So this missionary here is going to be doing God's work. <laughs> I like that. And there we go. So we got them under Catholicism which gives us plus 10 combat strength now while fighting in the, their territory and meanwhile we're gonna let this legion heal up here outside of range of melbourne and then or melbourne 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 yeah it's melbourne melbourne australia yeah yeah i know laugh at me all you want i deserve it uh but anyway we are gonna let the legion heal up a little bit because then we're gonna basically escort our missionaries in and try and convert Melbourne, not to mention we're gonna pillage the campus or at least try to. We do have the promotion on this warrior already, so we'll go ahead and hit that scout and then we'll heal up next turn with our promotion. Meanwhile, before he denounces us, let's actually go ahead and Oh, I don't want to send him a delegation. I want that gold for that tile. Yeah, I really don't care that much. Let's actually sell them our luxuries here. And open borders. 
so that'll work on uh, improving our relations and then I'll actually uh, send him a delegation because now clearly I can afford it with the money he just gave me, right? Meanwhile, like here... We're gonna buy that tile also before I forget. And now since we do have the cash, we might as well buy, buy that other force tile for chopping there. And here we're gonna put this production, we're gonna chop it into the encampment, I think. Or you know what? Cause yeah, they're already building city walls here. No, you know what? Before we chop the encampment, we're gonna chop out a horseman. We have maneuvering. Just double checking that I wasn't screwing that up. Okay, so we locked in production on our encampment here. And we'll actually start building it because we'll chop out our horses and we'll put the production into the encampment. Okay, we got currency, which is nice. We'll actually put this chop into the encampment. Okay, we got theology. Our legion's healing up pretty decently there. We're ready to chop more units, so let's go ahead and switch into another horseman. And now straight back to that encampment. All right, they finished their walls here, which is a little unfortunate, but not too much we can do about it at the moment. However, we do have the battering ram close by. So we're gonna start getting that over there as quickly as we can. I'm sure we'll survive one attack from them. So we'll move there and promote next turn. Alright, so now that theology's done, we can get temples to really boost our culture. And we are gonna have recorded history fairly soon, but I think I want to get towards the raid policy card that much quicker. So we're just gonna head straight there. Now, we'd get the boost if we researched construction. However, our science really is kind of lacking in that <laughs> regard. But I think it'll be worth it. So we're actually going to go into wheel and construction here. The reason being is we will have two pillages for their campus and their library. And plus their library is under construction here too. So that's, an, that's four total pillages that we'll have. So that should be able to get us through the tech tree faster to get those promotions, which will actually get us faster to where we want to go in the grand scheme of things in theory anyway meanwhile we've got two envoys built up we could take suzerainship of singapore but really it doesn't do much for us right now so we might as well just hold on to our envoys in case we do find a city state that we like
All right, now that the battering ram is there, well, first off, let's run in here and pillage. There we go. We got the wheel. We're headed towards construction. Meanwhile, here in this city, we still have the chops. I'd actually... Ugh, I'm tempted. I think we actually might be better off to chop the watermill, which I never thought I would be saying that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to put this chop into the water mill because it'll give us the boost for construction, which we should get pretty quickly with another pillage, which will then boost games and recreation. Meanwhile, now that the battering ram is in place, we can actually go ahead and start smacking this wall a little bit. The faster we get this wall done, down the better it is for everybody because we can just sit there and take shots at it without it hitting us back right meanwhile we finished a builder here we're going straight for another builder you guessed it i think what i'm gonna do is actually Hello. okay we'll spread to that city there but what i what I was saying is that I'm actually going to get my legion to back away from this city so that hopefully they come out with the builder and repair their two mines here that the barbarians pillaged so that I can pillage them and get money. So we're going to actually go ahead and try that. Meanwhile, they're building the fucking great library. I just don't even know what to say yet at this point really <laughs> like that was not there like i'm not imagining things that was not there just like the last turn or two so they decided that hey you know we're we're losing cities we're in this war we're being swarmed but hey that great library that's a good idea right <laughs> anyway fuck it i'm just gonna shut up let's keep going Okay, we're up to three envoys now. And again, we'll send this builder up here to Antium. Alright, so the walls are gone now, so there's no need to hang around with our battering ram. So we'll start moving that towards that city. They still didn't come out with the builder there. I am going to go ahead and hit that unit. Because we'll be able to heal up next turn when we pillage that for health. Meanwhile, we're up to 141 in gold. It's 150 to upgrade another legion. Let's go ahead and see if we can sell off some more of our cash. Or not cash, more of our luxuries. And considering I don't even know where Peter is on the map, I'm okay with declaring a friendship so that I have somebody to trade my luxuries to for gold and shit like that. And then I would just leave him for last. All right, meanwhile, our trader finished the route. And yeah, I think we just stick with internal trade routes for now. Got three turns left on that water mill. But meanwhile, hold on. We should be able to chop this, no? Okay, there we go. We got the watermill out. So now construction's boosted. Hold on. Before we go and do this, we want to make sure that apprenticeship is queued up so we don't lose any science. But now we will go ahead and pillage science there. And now just start to get the hell out of the way. And we want to get our encampment up. 
Ooh, that was a close call, actually. Our horseman almost bit the dust there. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and heal this horseman up. Meanwhile, we'll get our horseman out of the way here. settler after all so we still do get to come over here and build a city with all those nice chops but in the meantime let's go ahead and lock in a campus here but then we're gonna start with the old god obelisk first Another city. Uh, speaking of another city, let's go ahead and buy a missionary. And we're going to work on Melbourne and Brisbane next. Actually, you know what? If I chop that, I'm going to lose the production and I could only build a plantation on it, which won't help with production at all afterwards. So, you know what? I'm not going to. We'll chop that one. I should have moved there. That was my bad. I don't know why I can't swap that. Huh. Weird. All right, we'll cancel that. We'll just stay there and build a mine. Same thing here. So now we're essentially done with our chopping in this city. So we're immediately going to move Magnus back to our capital. And Pingala and him can just basically switch cities. Okay, there we go. We got games and recreation booted, so we are definitely not too far away from military training, especially considering we're two turns out from an encampment there, which will boost that as well. So that's coming together fairly nicely. Meanwhile, which this is the volley archer. All right, so we're gonna, no, we're not. Cause I was gonna come around the lake, but then we would get hit by that city over there. However, it does look like they've repaired those tiles. So my strategy did work with pulling our legion away. Um, so we'll definitely go ahead and take advantage of that with our horsemen. Uh, meanwhile, this guy's close to a promotion too. So it'll actually work out well that we'll be able to hit them quite a bit there. And then meanwhile, we will just start sending the rest of our army over there we can afford an upgrade so we're gonna go ahead and upgrade this warrior here to a legion because they have good health and meanwhile this guy can get in the city and just wait until he, he heals up um, i was gonna have actually yeah fuck that we'll we're gonna switch them there the horseman's more important so i want him to heal in this city because it's faster I think we're gonna have this city so quickly I actually will start coming around this way we already have 
Ballarat there under our religion anyway, which gives us a huge head start. I just realized I forgot to check if he had masonry, and he does. Okay. Wait, of course he does. Yeah, I built a fucking battering ram already. Wow. Okay. Oh. 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 Crossbows. All right. Well, when they get crossbows, it's time to not fuck around with archers anymore. It's a little bit unfortunate that happened. However, shit happens really, right? Okay, so that kind of puts us on a clock. We want to get this fucking city as quick as humanly possible. We're still in an in okay position here, though. And I'll tell you why right here. Because we already have our legion in place. And we have the, we're sitting on the Cahokia mound that we can pillage for health anyway. Plus, we have our legion back here that we can also rotate out to hit them afterwards to try and knock these walls down as quickly as possible i would like to get in here and raid their campus so we can get to apprenticeship that much quicker however we also do have wait why can't i oh they didn't repair it oh i guess not okay well they they didn't repair their mine i can't pillage it however i was gonna say that they have their builder here which we can then take to lure the crossbowmen out of the city walls. I'm actually kind of confused why this encampment doesn't have a wall on top of it. Health like that one there. Okay, we can pillage this one for gold. However, I think let's get this builder and then come back. And next turn, we can pillage for the gold. Okay, so we want to start smashing down the city walls here. Let's take our upgrade here. Meanwhile, we'll come in here so that we can start spreading to Melbourne. Okay, so we met Mohan Dare there. And Peter's dug in balls deep with them, so yeah, there's no point in us spending our envoys. We'll hold on to them for now. Meanwhile, we finish the builder here in the capital. We'll immediately start on another one. Okay, so we finished the encampment here. So we boosted military training and only have five turns left to go on that. So here in Antium, we're gonna go ahead and start work on a builder. And then after we finish that builder to help Rome chop out the shit down there, we'll definitely switch it up and start working on our infrastructure there, basically. Uh, meanwhile, here, let's actually, oh, never mind, that does. I was gonna say let's buy that tile so we can get the encampment going in the future but okay yeah anyway things are coming along here if you'd be interested in seeing how i would have played this differently myself i have a turn three save file from the viewer who submitted this to me like the turn 60 part where he was playing so if you'd like to see how i would have done things differently on this map just leave me a comment down below and if there's enough interest then i'll make a, a video where i do a playthrough of how i would have done things a little bit differently myself and see how much of a difference we could have at turn 60 between my choices and the route that he ended up taking but anyway let's continue moving here we want to keep spreading our religion meanwhile we definitely want to get our warrior the hell out of the way there so it doesn't get killed we'll move the archer back basically at this point until we get crossbows like our archers are basically useless uh, other than we have to completely stay out of reach of their cities and their crossbows more or less so 
yeah anyway okay so what we're gonna do we're gonna spend send this builder directly in here hoping to lure the crossbowmen out meanwhile with our horsemen we're gonna go ahead and pillage for the gold and then take the upgrade after and we're going down the left side of the tree because we want to get to the pillaging only costing one movement tree with light calf um so that's the plan is to hopefully have this crossbowman come out and go after that builder in the meantime here we're going to be moving forward with our legions speaking of which do we have any more warriors that have decent health and we don't however you know what i'm going to change my mind i'm going to switch this warrior into the city because i'm going to upgrade him to a, a legion and the legion are better than the horsemen for us they're more valuable at the moment because they help us bang down the walls quicker yeah meanwhile speaking of banging down the walls let's get started with that guy all right there's a builder up there we could go and steal we might consider doing that because i'm not too worried about mohan darrow all right so unfortunately i don't think this horseman is long for this world <laughs> like i'm pretty sure we're fucked no matter what if we go here and pillage we're gonna get hit by all these like the different cities cities and the encampment and we're gonna get smashed that way either way they can still hit us with the crossbow if we move to any of the tiles that we have available to us there so i think honestly the best option is to just hit the crossbow so we damage it a little bit and that way it won't be dealing full strength damage when it attacks our various units uh meanwhile here let's go ahead and heal up there and we're just gonna move forward with our other legions there and i think i will be going ahead and killing their builder here and taking it if they don't run away from us um just because at this point i don't really have a whole lot from peter that i want from him other than gold and i mean we already have a declared friendship so like he might get a little bit pissy but he's not gonna declare war or anything he can't right um yeah let's actually get this horseman healed up so let's send him to the encampment there meanwhile here we don't have any backup i don't want because we're sitting on a row two i don't want to be condemned i'm just gonna pull back for a minute we'll put them to sleep meanwhile though let's get this settler off our holy site and let's try to grab another missionary okay we're five we're five away so we'll grab that next next turn but i think basically as soon as we crack these city walls here we'll rotate our battering ram down and then we'll move in with this legion here and by then we should have enough cash to upgrade this warrior into a legion as well um because we're making 17 gold per turn and it's only a buck 50 to upgrade them meanwhile next turn magnus is established so we can start chopping in the capital as well and we're getting closer to the raid policy card which will definitely make things a lot easier for us All right, well, let's have a minute of silence or a moment of silence for our horseman there. <laughs> but in honor of him, let's go ahead and take this fucking city as quickly as we can. We've now knocked down the walls so our cavalry can actually engage with them if we had some, which is kind of ironic a little bit, I guess. Uh, but meanwhile, let's go ahead and take a promotion. We're going to go with Commando for the extra movement speed there, which brings us back up to full health as well. And now that they don't have city walls, we can actually attack it with archers too to get our archers some experience. Because we will be upgrading them to crossbowmen so they're not completely useless at some point. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and... Why can't we declare war on Mohandaro? There we go. We're 
All right, and I'd like to pillage that campus before we take this city, ideally, but if it comes down to it, I would much rather just take the fucking city, right? Yeah, I didn't realize the loyalty was that bad in Adelaide, so we'll just go ahead and rotate the gal out there. All right, nice. They actually have a campus up there that we can pillage too. I mean, clearly we're not going to do it with our, <laughs> our fucking archer, but but still, it's good to know that it's there. Ooh, speaking of pillaging with our archer, we might be able to pillage their trade route there. Yeah, nice. They're coming straight for us. So we'll actually move up onto this hill here. Now they've come out of Melbourne. So let's jump onto the hill with that archer. And then ugh, if I don't take the city, fuck. If I don't take the city this turn, they're going to kill my archer, which I don't want to lose. Ugh. But then I don't get to pillage that. So we're going to be behind on apprenticeship. But you know what? We should be able to kill them no problem anyway with our legions and stuff. We're not that far behind tech wise plus we have crusade in our favor so yeah i think we just keep our archer alive okay meanwhile magnus is established start work on our temple here for the added faith but more importantly the culture from it all right but we're only three turns away from getting a golden age which will definitely help with the loyalty problems we're having there anyway so i'm not losing too much sleep over it uh and next turn we get raid policy card two which will help us out quite a bit here but in the meantime we're gonna start on warlord's throne i guess or do I want to start chop chopping units? No, Warlord's Throne. So we'll start work on that and start slicing and dicing here. Meanwhile, let's actually pull, hold on. Let's pull this warrior back so he's in our ter territory and we can promote him to legion next turn and i think we'll be fine here to actually attack in our new city we're gonna lock in Yeah, we're going to lock in the campus district. But we're starting with a builder right away. <laughs> okay, we're going to refuse this deal. Okay, nice. We got the policy that we've been waiting for. We have raid. However, let's take a look and see how we're doing for great general wise. And we're four turns away at this point. So what we're going to do is actually switch out of strategos here. And we're going to put in the raid policy card there instead. Okay. And then meantime, now, Kill that guy, come in here with the legion, and we can go ahead and move our battering ram, ram there too. 
we'll let these legions heal up outside of range of Melbourne, and then we'll just rotate them in and keep banging down the city walls. And before I forget, I want to get that archer back in there to help with the loyalty, even though we have it under better conditions than it was. It's not in a perfect world, right? Same thing here. We're going to move on to the encampment, upgrade to a legion, and we'll rest here until we're in better health. Ah, those fuckers. <laughs> hit there and raid them that's an easy 50 gold okay meanwhile we got three turns of warlords thrown here So I think this should finish it, basically. And now we'll just concentrate on some cavalry. And considering we just got warlords thrown, I'm not really worried about recorded history or anything. We want to go straight for mercenaries. Meanwhile, I think I will actually put the city's production into the temple. Because the quicker we can get our culture up, the faster we get to mercenaries and can upgrade our troops easier. And then this is the promotion we've been waiting for. We're going to take Black Marketeer with Magnus there. All right, so the city went after our horsemen again, which is fine. We withstood it without an issue there, and it gave us the promotion that the experience we needed for the promotion. <laughs> so we'll take on that note, we'll get the fuck out of the way and take a promotion to heal up a little bit. And I'm actually going to move forward with these units. They can only hit one of our troops at a time with the city until they get a crossbowman in there and having the troops here will actually help with our combat strength against the city to knock the walls down that much quicker. Oh, speaking of which, that was definitely a mistake. I should have spread the religion. So we took religious control before I hit the walls. So I would have had an added plus 10 combat strength for that attack. That was definitely a mistake, but you can't play perfect all the time or in my situation, any of the time. But hey, teach their own, right? All right, so we'll switch out of the temple, chop out a horseman, and then pop back into the temple right after. just without giving it too much thought here monumentality is probably the best choice for us allowing us to get extra movement speed on our builders and to be able to purchase builders for 30 percent cheaper with faith and gold however commercial hub and harbor districts gold adjacency pro providing science as well would definitely be a nice choice if we had more up already However, by the time we end up building our commercial hubs and harbors to be able to take advantage of this, we'd probably lose a lot of the benefit of choosing it. So we're going to go ahead and opt for monumentality instead. All right, so they really laid into our legion over here. I think we're going to rotate them back here. We'll pop that one forward. 
and we'll just kind of do the shuffle. Meanwhile, we can also go ahead and pillage this theater square. So let's rotate here and we'll bring our second legion in closer. Now that they're converted, we head for Brisbane next. Yeah, so I think what we'll do is we'll actually buy another missionary here. And then we'll go ahead and buy a builder here in the capital. Because we'll want to get some of these hills all mined up after we're done chopping. Uh, speaking of chopping, let's go ahead and grab ourselves two more horsemen. Here we go. So we clearly don't have a lot of diplomatic favor to work with. However, ideally, I, I would like to get melee here with the plus five combat strength. So we'll just try for that. Um, meanwhile, we'll pick ourselves for this. But again, we're not investing any more diplomatic favor than we need to. All right, so the melee actually did work out. They got plus five combat strength, so that's nice for our legions. Speaking of which, let's go ahead. Yeah, we already have our things queued up. So let's go ahead and pillage for a hundred culture. Tactics wise, I think now we switch right up there. We're done chopping out our units from the capital. So let's go ahead and put Strategos back in for the great general points. And just look at those walls melt now with the extra combat strength from freaking the city there. Hold on. What is that? Okay, that's a farm, but they do have a mine that I want to pillage. Oh. All right, so now, now that the walls are gone on this city, we're not worried about that. However, we want to bang out the district walls. <laughs> we want to bang out the fucking walls on their encampment so it's not shooting us either so that's why we're shifting over the batting ram we're gonna hit that next uh meanwhile canberra finish the granary which will help it grow faster and i don't really care about the amenities or anything for this we're gonna go straight towards the library and we're going to take our builder here and start repairing tiles for it. Okay, meanwhile, though, we have another governor title because we just got defensive tactics. We already have Magnus promoted as much as we really care to at this point. So Pingala is going to be our next focus and culture is more important for us right now we want to get down to mercenaries as quickly as we can so we're going to take connor sir victor is nice for loyalty in when you're playing domination games because you want to get that garrison com commander promotion to get the plus five combat strength when defending but then more importantly your other cities within nine tiles get plus four loyalty there which is nice however we're in a golden age anyway so I'm not really worried about loyalty at this point. And we're at, like, it's not gonna be hard for us to get another governor title or two because we will eventually be improving our government plaza anyway, and that kind of stuff. Uh, meanwhile here though, 
Magnus really isn't doing us a whole lot of good in the capital because we're done chopping. So we're going to be rotating him and there's not really a whole lot of chops anywhere that we need him, I think. So I guess at this point we'll probably just move Pingala to our biggest city, which would be Antium, right? However, you know what? We have all these builders down here in the capital anyway. So we're going to be improving the terrain here. So let's actually move Pingala back to the capital because I think the capital overall will end up growing. And for that matter, we'll put it on a food focus so it grows a little bit faster too. But we're only turn two turns out from apprenticeship, so man at arms aren't too far away either. damage tiles it could be worse but yeah that definitely hurts a little bit that's for sure so meanwhile we'll get the archer headed towards Kaber there I want to get him in there to heal and then our horsemen should be healed up pretty close to full health if not at full health by that point which will help us out too all right so meanwhile here we won't have enough movement to move and pillage with this legion and i'm not entirely sure if it can survive another attack So yeah, we'll just rotate them there. That way he's safe and I don't have to worry about it dying unless they come out with a crossbow or something from there. Not worried about fixing the warlord's throne at this point to be... Actually, yeah, I am. What am I talking about? <laughs> we want the production bonus and we're about to take a city. So never mind, we're gonna fucking heal the warlord's throne there. All right, anyway, um, continue on improving our tiles that are damaged here. got apprenticeship so we'll reevaluate our tech situation in a minute however let's get that horse in quick and i think we just build for the health there to play it safe so that our, our unit doesn't die Again, we don't want to take that city before we get our warlord's throne fixed next turn and then ideally we want to pillage that mine over here too for the money before taking it but considering we do have to deal with this crossbowman the priority is to not lose units right at all costs you want to avoid losing units uh meanwhile here we want to get towards engineering, which will allow us to get to crossbows because it would be nice to have our archers back in the game. So I think now that we got apprenticeship taken care of, the next step is for us to kind of head down that path. And so we'll start work on engineering for now. Oh, fuck's sakes. I forgot that we can't. I forgot that we can't 
go through their territory there. I was sitting here like, why the hell do I have four movement and can't go any further? Um, you know what? We've been holding on to these envoys for a long term time anyway. Let's go ahead and spend a couple of them. We'll become suzerain and we can zip through their territory here, which I think is definitely worth it. All right, so they moved out of the encampment to chase our missionaries, I guess. That's the story I'm gonna stick with in my head. I just noticed too that Canberra here is dealing with bad loyalty, so I'll switch Magnus over there. What the f oh my god. I, I forgot to put Bengala into the capital, so we'll get, go ahead and do that now. Then meanwhile, like I said, we'll rotate Magnus over to help with the loyalty here. Okay, so we got our great general, Boudica, right? We're gonna go ahead and transfer her up to Gambara here. Meanwhile, next turn we'll be able to pillage that mine there, which is basically all we want from Melbourne now before we actually go ahead and attack it. All right, so we got one spread here with this guy. Let's go ahead and spend that. Spend that as well. Next turn, we should be able to convert Brisbane. In the meantime, though, let's definitely go ahead and take a shot at the crossbow. Okay, so we'll have to be careful. Kokia has their own crosswoman. Meanwhile, we did finish our Warlord's Throne, so let's go ahead and get the shrine repaired there so we can get some more culture coming in too. Um, in the meantime, we finished the temple here. I think we literally just, you know what? I wouldn't mind the pyramids. Having extra builder charges isn't bad at all. Yeah, I think I just run encampment training for money and great general points. We finished the old gobalus here. Let's just start working on that campus. Okay, we can get enough cash there, I think, that we can buy this tile. Nice. All right, so here we're actually gonna basically wrap it up. It's going on 10.30 now and I'm <laughs> tired. I just grabbed another coffee, so I am going to wake up, but I want to get this edited and ready to come out tomorrow. So I think we've basically proved that the game save file wasn't a complete disaster and we definitely gone in the right direction. So this is what I would do here. Like, I'll just quickly show you. We'd want to pillage it here, but basically I would take Melbourne And now that I have Melbourne, take a little bit of experience attacking their crossbow here, but essentially I'd make peace with them. So now I'm going to come and peace out, take a whole bunch of the shit. They're obviously ceding all those cities to me and their gold, a whole bunch of their gold per turn, not to mention 
their luxuries, all the fun stuff. Okay, so he won't give me that shit, but there you go. Okay, so we're gonna make peace. The peace is made. Now, I would use this 10 turns of peace to simply come here and crush Krahokia. Like, me attacking Kahokia has nothing to do with my peace treaty with John Curtin. So you know what? Why don't we do that real quick? Killing Kahokia sounds fun to me. So yeah, essentially, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to take advantage. We have the peace treaty anyway. That means we can go ahead and convert Australia to our religion without him attacking our units, which then as soon as we restart the war, we'll have the plus 10 combat strength. It's going to allow us to upgrade our troops because we've gotten the like man at arms are available to us for all our legions. So now guess what? We're going to upgrade all of our legions. And again, we'll use this opportunity to basically just reposition our troops really quickly. We'll smash Cahokia and then by that time, we'll be ready to go back against Australia if and when we we, we feel like it, essentially, right? We just need to get this farm here repaired and I'm pretty sure that's six but I mean that's kind of out of the way so I probably will just say fuck it and why not build a farm here this should be six I think and it is so we got feudalism now we're going to go ahead and put the Limes policy card in because we want to get those city walls in the capital quicker. And I think we take serfdom and start building some builders. Meanwhile, let's definitely rotate Magnus to Kume as well so we can be ready to chop shit out. And start those city walls here. In two turns, we'll have it boosted. And now that we have that done, we want to head straight towards mercenaries. I'm just thinking about who I'm going to want to promote next, whether I want to get Pingala here, Researcher, or start going towards Victor. But we got a bit of time to, to think about that anyway. Okay, so we got engineering now. We can get catapults, which is perfect timing because that's exactly what I want to chop out down here in Kume once we get Magnus over there. And once we chop out a few of those catapults, we'll definitely want to be turning them into trebuchets pretty soon. But I think what we do now in the meantime though is grab machinery and then we want to start heading towards military engineering and castles as well because we want to upgrade our horsemen to horsemen horser to horsemen <laughs> fuck off <laughs> anyway we're taking machinery now we're also going to be focusing on building our campuses up too right but in the meantime that will definitely 
give us some things to chop out here with Magnus once he's set up in that city. Okay, this is perfect. We got the crossbowmen separated back there. Meanwhile, our troops here are all healed up and ready to go. I think probably next next turn we'll attack. I'd like to get this cavalry. It'll probably be the turn after because I want to get our cavalry that much closer. Meanwhile, in Rome, we'll go for a granary, so we want to increase our housing so we can get to seven population. And we definitely will not be renewing our friendship with Peter. In fact, we'll be declaring war in 10 turns or whatever the fuck it is here. How long is it until our friendship expires? 10 more turns. There you go. And killing his mercenaries or missionaries would help us convert these cities too, but... We're going to concentrate on Cahokia. Okay, perfect. That was perfect timing. We just got mercenaries so we can upgrade our units cheaper finally, which is nice. However, it's not huge on our priority list right now until we make a little bit more money, which coincidentally we will be after <laughs> we pillage these freaking all these mines that they have. Uh, yeah, so kind of perfect timing. Um, meanwhile, let's take a look at our policies. We definitely don't need limes, and we're going to be slotting in the raid policy card. And how many turns is it going to be until we get our next civic? Two turns, so not very long at all. I actually want to get... Where is it? Triangular trade is what I'm looking for. You know what? I want to get... I want to get to monarchy in order to boost castles. So I think that's where we go. And I don't think triangle triangular trade is until up here. Yeah, that, that's the card I was looking for, but it's we're a ways away from that yet. So meanwhile, we know what we have to do to get where we're going. We already have divine right and recorded history boosted. I don't think we're going to be able to get civil service boosted boosted we'll have to just kind of actually you know what as long as we don't destroy Co destroy Kohokia too much when we take it over here we might be able to just harvest the corn and the rice to boost it to 10 especially once we put Magnus in there so we want to definitely get these builders over here as quickly as we can so that we can chop these catapults out that we're looking for. Might as well just get them working on the campus. It's going to take them forever to get that builder done. And yeah, these builders are going to take too long anyway. So I'll let them finish the granary there. Anyway. Uh, yeah, it's time, so let's go ahead and commence the slaughter. I never knew that. There you go. I thought we'd be able to, that they, 
I forgot that we made peace with them technically, so we have to wait the 10 turns as well. So that's a little bit anticlimactic. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and tell our guys to stand down on alert and just chill out. Okay, so building the bath will also give us the boost that we need for right here. Military engineering. Meanwhile, we got five turns on the campus there. Okay, so Magnus is established here. Unfortunately, there's no policy cards that you can get in order to boost siege units. I really hope they have one. In Civilization 7. Oh, my bad. Next turn we chop. Somehow I didn't switch out limes for a raid. Like, I'm pretty sure I fucking did. That's a little bit weird. I must have not a click confirmers. Oh yeah, because I went to go check how many turns. Yeah, yeah. All right, so anyways. <laughs> Good thing we couldn't declare war anyways. Okay, we got raid. We got conscription. We got strategos. However, we're going to be upgrading archers and stuff and want to be able to, so... Let's just go ahead and slot that in. All right, meanwhile, let's put a chop into that. I think we actually will promote Pangala to Researcher and then we'll go for Victor next so apparently he wants the Mercury but definitely not going to accept that deal <laughs> ah, you know what why not okay so meanwhile I think we can actually attack now no next turn So we'll go ahead and trade away some more Mercury to Peter. And now can we demand that he fucks off with his stupid missionaries? How many more turns? Four more turns. All right. Meanwhile... I think it's red team go over here. So let's declare the war and take a look at this before we do anything fancy. Chops, so let's get another catapult ready. And it should be both of them, I'm pretty sure. Yep. We need two more chops. To get another full catapult so let's buy this tile because we can build a mine on it 
after. <laughs> I didn't think Johnny Boy would like that too much. Okay, so we can officially upgrade our archers. And we do have that policy card in for the discount on gold upgrades. So now that we don't have to hide them anymore, let's upgrade our first one. Okay, meanwhile, move here. in place. Now we promote here. And meanwhile, pillage and pillage that next turn. Military engineering next because we want trebuchets. Okay, meanwhile, let's slot up another catapult. Horseman. I should have protected you better, buddy. That's my bad. Okay, let's get rid of the stupid fucking crossbowman. I'm irritated now, if you can't tell. <laughs> We're gonna pillage that for faith. Take money here. Smash down those city walls, so now they are completely vulnerable. And then... We'll shift these guys over. So next turn, we'll pillage those two tiles. Pillage that farm to heal our horsemen up and then take the city. And meanwhile, we finished the builder here. I think it just makes sense to build a bath. It also makes sense to think about a dam, but it's been so long since I fucking played this game. I need to check uh, Damn, We need to look for this right here the river has to go along two sides of the dam x okay which means we could build one here but then we couldn't build an aqueduct well we could build one there yeah so why don't we just say fuck that farm or you know what we don't have to because we can go this here would touch two We can do this for our bath and then theoretically do an industrial zone there or something. All right, meanwhile, we did hit seven population in our city here. And yeah, let's go ahead and lock in. Our commercial hub. Okay. Anyway. Sorry, I'm getting distracted there. Okay. Meanwhile, we should be chopping our last catapult out here. And we're only five turns away from trebuchets. Plus, we got some gold saved up to upgrade them. So, that'll be just in time to go back to war against Australia.
and I don't want him to have the uh, embassy in there because we're going to be probably declaring war on him right well would be if I was going to continue playing this because I think you've gotten the point by now essentially we've turned it around we would be able to keep going I mean realistically if if there's enough interest let me know in the comments if you want to see me continue this and finish this game off but I mean I don't plan to at the moment those fuckers stole the barb camp on us whatever okay anyway but let's go ahead oh I thought that pillage the gold there pillage the gold there we don't even need to kill the catapult because we're about to kill the city so there's no no point really i mean it does give us experience though so i mean we might as well take it i guess right? and everything's pillaged that we want and there we go so we took their city if you've enjoyed the video though do me a favor and leave a like on it if you haven't already the videos i'm putting up on the screen for you right now one of them shows five mistakes that almost everybody makes in the early game and how to quickly avoid them and the second one is gonna be a domination opening with julius caesar the other leader of rome and walking through exactly how i'd suggest you do that to crush your enemies anyway i've rambled enough i'm gonna shut up now and i'll see you in the next video